Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Um, and for reasons, and for reasons that I'll explain later on, yes, I'm doing a, I'm doing a cast here on a Saturday morning. Yeah, doing a cast on Saturday morning. Get out of their calendar. Um, anyway, but before I get, before I get too into it, um, the music is Bangarodrum, The Darkening of Valinor. Uh, it's an unreleased Dungeon Synth album. It came out in 2015. Um, I, this is something that was in my watch later. I don't, I don't want, for lack of a better word, folder. Like, uh, it's on my, it's on my YouTube. My uh, watch later section, folder, whatever. But anyway, um, I must have, I must have went by this and just saw this really cool blue cover. I'm like, okay, I gotta listen to that later and then put it in my watch later folder. And like all, and like always, the cool as hell, the cool as hell thumbnail that out of season are always out of out of seasons always putting out so really ups the awesomeness i mean i mean i kind of love i kind of love how they do the thumbnails i mean you know they're tooting their own horn here on the right side of the screen you know they're they're putting themselves out there without being in your face about it so you know without uh doing shit like forcing the people that they're sponsoring to try to insidiously insert an ad in like some random part of their video. I think uh, Jim Cornette first comes to mind, but when they, you know, like during the podcast, like he'll, he'll try to insert, he'll try to plug a sponsor like right in the middle of a conversation, but he'll try to be subtle about it. I mean, really pisses me off and probably one of the biggest reasons why I don't watch his stuff anymore. I mean, if you're going to plug a sponsor, I mean, do it on like the very beginning and or the very end of a video. Not try to sneak it in there in the middle. I hate that. You know, don't insult my lack of intelligence. So, that, so yeah, no more of that. But anyway, you get, anyway, going back to what I was originally saying, I love the way they do the thumbnails. They're great at putting themselves out there and they're just simply putting themselves on the right side of the thumbnail. You know, the logo, the website, that's it. And then the album cover on the left. But like I said, I've never heard this one before, so so for all I know, this could be absolutely annoying, and I might end up having to cut it off and then grab another album. But anyway, we'll see. So let me rewind back to the beginning here. Oh, and I did forget to sound test this, so let me move forward a bit. Turn it down. All right, I'm going to stay close enough on that. So let me rewind it back. Okay. Oh, uh, well. Oh, and... Yeah, I'll leave it. And before I forget again, gotta have, gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy Peach Mangoes. Get ready for some pops. All right, well, the big thing. I had a call in last night because I couldn't keep my damn eyes open. Um, well, I mean, I basically had no sleep yesterday morning. Um, just, just my brain, um, just nonstop dreams and nightmares. Um, I mean, my, my head was basically running a damn, damn movie marathon all day, so... And when that happens, it's like I hadn't slept at all. Uh, but, which, I've had this happen before. You know, it, you know, I have to cut my stream off early, lay down and take a, like, like take a one, or take like an hour, hour and a half nap or something, and it kind of catches me up, catches me back up a little bit. And then going to work, you know, a little bit groggy, but nothing major. Well, nope. Just, uh, couldn't do it. It was, I mean, it was almost like I had the COVID vaccine shot. That's how bad it was. Like, I just groggy as hell. You know, so I ended up having a call in because there was no way in hell I'd be able to go into work in the condition I was in. So, but luckily what I, but I shouldn't get in trouble 
Um, at least, or my, you know, my calling is, was, for lack of a better word, legal. So I, sh I shouldn't have to worry about being, being called to the office or anything, and um, being damn near fired from my job because at one point, I think there you could have up to five columns in a six month, in a rolling six month period. After you get that six, oh, let me back up a bit. Um, for those that have seen my other cast, I'm about to repeat myself here because what I'm about to say, I've said in um, at least one of my other casts. But anyway, um, I got called from the office. And I was about to be fired because uh, I had eight call-ins, but um, three of those call-ins were COVID-related. I basically had a call-in three days because um, I think it was... I was at a restaurant with my mom and sister and a whole bunch of other people. This is around uh, peak hours, you know, the launch rush, and uh, nobody in there was wearing a mask. And this is during the, for lack of a better word, heyday of the Delta variant of the COVID virus. So I didn't, and again, nobody, nobody, nobody Applebee's was wearing their mask. So I figured, I figured to be on the safe side, just go ahead and uh, just call in, call in for the whole week, you know, again, for COVID related reasons. And, um, and, uh, and I did check with, um, uh, I don't even know the actual function of the company, but it's called Sedgwick. All of your long-term leave of absences and stuff like that, you're supposed to go through them and not Walmart. Um, but uh, but according to them, you you're not supposed to call them unless you're going to be gone for for more than three days. But I was only going to be gone for three days, so I didn't call them up at all. Well, when management was about to fire me because I had eight call-ins. And I told them three of those are COVID related. They asked me, what did you talk to Sedgwick? Um, well, they said you're not supposed to call them unless you, unless you're, unless you're going to be gone for more than three days. And since I'm only going to be gone for three. Oh, no, 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 no. Even if it's COVID related, you, you talk to them. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I mean, if I did, I probably would have talked to them. So, but the manager ended up erasing those three call-ins off. And so that put me right at the limit. Well, eventually, a few months later, um, I'm, I'm down to like, I'm down to like three call-ins. And at the end of the month, at the end of the month, I'm supposed to, two of them were going to drop. So I'd be down to one. So with this call-in here, um, net total, two. Two call-ins. So still under the five call-in limit. But again, um, personally, what I went through on that day, I thought was very harsh. But considering that we are we are perpetually short-staffed now, I can kind of understand why they did what they did. But um, I do. I also recall too. Um, one guy on our cleanup crew, the maintenance department. Um, he did end up losing his job because he had too many call-ins. So, so yeah, this, so I kind of had this in the back of my mind when I got called, when I, when it was, when it was my turn, for lack of a better phrase. So, but yeah, otherwise, the, pretty much this whole night, aside from me putting this cast together, was just, uh, was just slobbing and napping. Just fiddle farting around, watching TV for about an hour or so. And then just laying back down for yet another nap for about an hour, hour and a half. So, very unproductive night. Slash, a very bad night. So. Um, but otherwise, aside from that. Yes, I did. I did play some Gems of War from time to time. This is... Gems of War is my current jam right now. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail on why I like it so much, but it just—it's one of those games that I could just leave sitting in the background, and it uses next to no resources on my computer. So, unlike City Skylines, I—I 
I have to shut the game down just to do anything else because it's such a resource hog. I mean, it takes me longer just to shut down that game than it does shutting down my entire computer. The game was that bad. So... But otherwise, like I said, just... Just spent some time from time to time playing Gems of War. Um... Just doing... Just doing some doing some mad farming, um, a little bit of PvP. Um, but um, I also created my own guild as well. I was like, the other guild I was in, I was the only one in that guild that was actually doing anything. I was pretty much doing the heavy lifting in that whole guild. It's like dead as a doornail. I mean, at that point, I might as well just uh, start up my very own guild. I mean, if I'm the one doing all the work. You know, so, but that's just what I did. Started up my very own guild. Um, now as far as, uh, whether or not anybody else is gonna actually join that guild, I mean, I set it up so that anybody can join. No, I don't, you don't have to ask me for an invite or anything, just sign right up. So, it's open. Um, but, excuse me, otherwise, it remains to be seen whether or not somebody actually shows up. Yeah, like I said, did some mad farming. Did I think I did a little bit of PvP as well, and I'll probably I'll probably dabble a little bit in here after after this cast is done. So. Oh, anyway, also, um, but, uh, yeah, I did, um, uh, I don't, there's a lot more I want to say about this book that I'm reading called Strong Towns, but, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick, just a quickie little dabble on it, and, but I'm, I'm learning quite a bit from this guy, and best of all, he's not, he's not speaking of, he's not, complaining from just a purely city planning perspective I mean he's he's also mentioned the fact that uh the way we uh build cities now you know it's all car dependent it's all you know well you know just putting off fires with gasoline just solving problems by uh throwing more money at it or I should say throwing more debt at it you know that kind of thing it just it's also tied into, there's also an intangible aspect to the, to today's city building design. You know, obesity, drug addiction, um, a bunch of other society, societies, ills. it kind of goes hand in hand with the city, with the, uh, the city design as well. Like they're, like they're not mutually, mutually exclusive. So. So, but like, like I said, I'm, I'm, cons I'm basically considering this guy Charles Marone, a type of philosopher as well. So, at least in my mind, like I said, he's, he actually talks about everything, not just things from a city building perspective, but from a, but how it uh, ties into the intangibles of this world as well. So. Yeah, kind of poor planning here. So, but anyway, um, not my, nothing really special has changed this time around. Um, I just took, I took all the things that I learned from my pre, from my, um, from the previous stuff. Um, and yeah, I made damn sure to go ahead to, to turn off my video source as well. That was a major hang up I had some odd time ago. Um, my, um, uh, my uh, video, my last video wouldn't finalize. It wouldn't stop recording because I forgot to turn off a video source. The the Gems of War gameplay footage that you saw, yeah, I forgot to turn. I didn't turn that off, thinking I didn't need to. And um, uh, but I also need. I also made sure to have the close file when when inactive. I think it is. I checked that on, meaning when I turn that source off, the the file closes completely 
So, otherwise, uh, OB even when you try to stop the stop the recording, OBS will still will still continue running because the the video is technically also still running. So the the program doesn't really know what to do in that situation. So, in fact. But I, I, I do I do want to I do want to say this before I forget again. I remember um before I started working on um editing these videos, you know, adding video ambience as I like to call it to it. I used to be Oh man, I never do that. Oh my god man, man editing videos is a bitch man. It's like a totally insurmountable task. No way I'd ever be able to want to do that something like that. Now that I actually jumped in with both feet and tried my hand at doing it, it's not so hard. I mean, granted, I'm nowhere near on the caliber of Nerd City or Emperor Lemon, like that kind of, like that kind of, le or that level of sophistication. I'm nowhere near that, but you know, I'm dog paddling right now. I'm staying afloat, you know. So, you know, I'm doing it, you know. I wonder how many, uh, I'm, I was probably like this when I was a kid. I wonder how many other kids are like this. <laughs> I don't want to ride a bike. Uh, I'll fall over. Uh, it, riding a bike is hard. <laughs> I don't want to like a fall and break my neck. No. And then until you actually get put on a bicycle and you actually start pedaling for the first time. Yeah, you fall over and get hurt. But once you start figuring it out. Hey, look, I'm riding a bike. Yay. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm like this with um, making these videos. I mean, no, no, I'm no, uh, I'm no Lance Armstrong or anything. You know, minus the steroids, but anyway, you know, I'm, you know, I can't bike, on, you know, I couldn't ride a bike on the level that he could, but, you know, I was doing it, so, definitely pat myself on the back for that, so. <sighs> Oops. <clears throat> Something else I forgot to do. Yeah, something else I forgot too. I got a soundboard. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting to use it though. Just force a habit. But you know. <laughs> I still love that lab. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. We're still in by. Okay, but anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it here. I uh, pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna set to getting this video uploaded on YouTube and Twitch, and you know, getting it all processed and everything, everything. And I just hope everything goes well, and I hope everything goes well for you too. So, bye now, but. But bye now, everybody. See you all next time. And I should be able to do another one at least tomorrow. So, but until then, take care.